Wow, your figurine of the Eiffel Tower looks really amazing. Ah, oh, come on, you don't need to flatter me. I can handle the truth. No, I really mean it. It looks amazing and has so much detail to it. You must have really careful hands to be able to make miniatures like this. But it's awful. It was supposed to be a 1 to 1000 scale to the original, but now it's a 1 to 999.8 because I miscalculated. The color is slightly darker too, and worst of all, there's this tiny scratch here in the inside. Oh, I'm so useless at this. What we just witnessed here is a teamwork of two phenomena known as perfectionism and imposter syndrome, with a little spark of ignorance towards reality. If this whole ordeal feels familiar to you, then buckle up, cause I have some things to share with you. Now, before diving deeper into the topic, I should probably briefly explain the two for those of you who are unfamiliar with the terms. <clears throat> Perfectionism. The constant need to fulfill any task to its absolute completion. People with this trait tend to hyperfocus on errors and unsatisfactory results and try to fix them at any cost. However, this trait may also empower skills like patience and attention to detail too. Oh, I forgot to end the sentence there, my bad. Uh, maybe I should remove that? It sounds a little weird. There. Wait, did I misspell errors? Anywho, I have noticed that a lot of people think perfectionism is when someone thinks they're absolutely amazing, talented at everything, and loved by anyone and anything. You know, perfect. However, the correct term for that kind of behavior is actually referred to as narcissism. And being a self-centered bitch. A lot of perfectionists and people with perfectionistic traits are actually the opposite and might turn out to be rather humble. Oh, I should probably explain the difference between the two. People with perfectionism need the world around them to be perfect. The lawn is mowed at the exact right height, their desk is organized precisely the way they envision it, and some even have the obsession to eradicate as many germs in their household or working space as humanly possible. On the other hand, people with perfectionistic traits are kind of the perfectionist light, I suppose. They either have just some areas where perfectionism kicks in or don't experience it in a too extreme fashion. And they're generally more open to the opinion of others. I will be referring to both groups when we're talking about perfectionism though. I'm just a little too lazy to always name both. Trust me, this will save us a lot of time. Anyway, perfectionism still displays itself differently from one person to the next. Between work ethics, fashion, household maintenance, diet, sorting items, and any other thinkable life aspect, anything is fair game, if it is important to the specific person. How it ultimately plays out depends on a variety of factors. Childhood experience, social environment, even one's taste and character. Even when using an umbrella term like perfectionism, we should still keep in mind that everyone who falls underneath it is still a human being and therefore individual. One person might be humble or embarrassed about their behavior and another could turn into a territorial animal if you dare violate their order. Some try to make the people around them fix their mistakes too, while others think everyone around them is doing fine and they need to keep up. Hey, no need to break your head about a bad grade. You should use this opportunity to learn from your mistakes and improve yourself. You're only human, so it's completely natural to make mistakes here and there. Oh no, I was one point short of the best grade. I'm such a failure! On the bright side, perfectionists also have some perks to them. Their patience, focus, and dedication makes them very reliable to work with. If you want to make sure your results are as good as possible, those are your go-to people. And since they're usually experts and or nerds on certain topics, you could ask them virtually any question relevant to them and expect as a minimum a satisfying answer. Okay, sometimes you might have to interrupt them when they start an hour-long monologue, but aside from that, great sources. As I have mentioned before, the fact that they are obsessed that all the specifics are 100% fulfilled and therefore are used to spotting when that isn't the case, they develop a great eye for detail. Or nose. Or ear. You get the point. This awareness of mistakes and flaws is a wee bit of a two-sided coin though. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing skill to have and hone. But it also results in you spotting mistakes without really trying to, 
which leads into the majority of your world consisting of problems and errors, which then spirals into thoughts whether anything you do is good enough, if everything you accomplish seems to be flawed or insufficient, no matter how hard you try. This is where our second mystery term kicks in. Imposter syndrome! No, not that one! <clears throat> Imposter syndrome. The event when someone doubts their own skills, knowledge, or worth. Despite being fully capable of performing a task at hand, one still thinks it is impossible for them to fulfill a certain expectation. This can occur regardless of qualification or similar performances. Uh, I mean, that is at least my take on the topic. You should probably ask someone more suitable for this. Hang on. Now, imposter syndrome is not exclusive to perfectionists. They are far more vulnerable to it, though. If your mind is constantly filled with screw-ups, no matter how small, it will make you doubt yourself. But it can still occur to anyone. As a matter of fact, you probably already experienced it once or twice without realizing it at the moment, especially since it mostly comes up when we're confronted with a situation we're not really familiar with or prepared for. Uh, sorry, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Could you please fill in the forms today? I'm already late. Yeah, sure, leave it to me. Thanks, you're the best. Wait, I have never done this before. Another common reason why you might feel like an imposter is comparing yourself to others in, mostly, unrealistic scales. Be it your work experience next to the experience of that one colleague who somehow worked longer for the company than it actually exists, or me saying, oh no, I am such a bad voice actor compared to Matt Mercer and Bryce Pappenbrook. Yeah. What I'm basically trying to say here is this. We've all got our insecure moments. The only reason we can't see others struggle so much is mostly because we don't know what's going on inside their head. And if you do make a mistake or even completely screw up, remember that it is only human. Plus, those are life's best tutors. So the next time something goes wrong, just tell yourself, Congratulations! You blew it! Here is one experience point for you and you alone. I'm mostly trying to convince myself, but feel free to apply as much of this to yourself as you like. Speaking of which, I jotted down some tips that helped me move past self-doubt. Maybe they can help you out too in some way. Take a break. If you find yourself at a loss, you should probably switch it up with an activity that is fun to you. Go out with friends, play some games, uh, bully your local cow, whatever flows your boat. Even taking half an hour off of your project can help your mind relax and maybe take a fresh look at the situation again. Additionally, we all get our best ideas when we're doing something unrelated. Don't chase small fish. Is there something in your project you don't like? Ask yourself how beneficial it would even be to fix it. If it's not that big a deal, then just appreciate that you spotted the flaw in the first place and let it go. You'll be better at avoiding the same mistake in the future. Reflect your progress. Not sure if your work is good enough? Take a look at what you created a year ago, or maybe when you just started. Trust me, it will look like a masterpiece after that. Accept or ask for outside opinions. I know a lot of people say, don't listen to others, you should follow your own heart. What I don't like about the sentiment is that it inclines you to downright ignore other people's points of view. There is always a reason why people say the things they say. Just acknowledge that everyone has a unique perspective on things, and that you should always take it with a grain of salt. And if 30 non-relatives tell you you're doing a great job, there might be some weight behind that. Turn the unknown into something known. A lot of things sound more intimidating than they actually are. If you're unfamiliar with something, just try it out. Maybe view it as a test of your meadow. You'll be surprised that the form you've been dreading to complete was actually a breeze to fill in. There is a lot more I could say about this topic, but the video is long enough as it is. I actually wanted to include a couple of personal stories too, but maybe next time. I hope you found it helpful or relatable regardless. And if there's anything I missed or that I should talk about more, then please let me know in the comments. With that being said, I hope you all have a great time out there and I will see you in next Sunday. N no, no, that was an awful take. Um, with that being said, take care and see you next Sunday. Uh, not quite. Um, I'm off now, see you next Sunday. Uh, how do other people end their videos?